Over the years, I've reviewed a number of different lasers, starting from simple benchtop versions right up to big industrial size uh, laser cutters. All the lasers worked quite well, but they had one thing in common, and that was they were quite expensive to get started on. Even on a good tabletop laser, you're looking at a starting point of about $1,500. So, when Algo Laser approached me with this tiny little pixie laser, I was quite excited for two reasons. Firstly, by the sheer size of it, it's tiny enough to fit on any small desktop space. As scale modelers, our desktop space gets chewed up pretty quickly. Secondly, the sheer cost of this little unit really puts it in the ballpark of most scale modelers. One of the great things about this Algo Laser Pixie is it virtually comes straight out of the box ready to go. There is a minimum amount of unpacking as well as setup. The only assembly that needs to be done is this little cover that goes over the laser. It does go in a certain way because it has a little cutout in the frame so your finger can slip in and open it up. Before we go any further, let's check out some of the specs of the Pixie. Now it's available in 3, 5 or 10 watt versions and it is a diode laser. The work area is 100 by 100 millimeters, which is about 4 inches. Screen size is at 3.5 inch and as you can see by dimensions, it's a tiny little unit. Weighs in at 3.75 kilos. It has a very impressive speed of 6,000 millimeters per minute and the laser life lasts about 10,000 hours. Now, let's check out how easy it is to get going. Plug in the 24 volt power supply, then the Pixie boots up and there are a couple of steps that we need to go through. I needed to select the language, but it's already defaulted at English. Then we set up the Wi-Fi and does a quick search and it's found my Wi-Fi um, system, which is picture perfect. And then you type in the password, of course, I'm not going to show you that. If everything goes well, it will tell you it's connected successfully. We then can set a password to avoid any kids accessing the machine. I don't need to do that because it's in my workshop, so I just skip straight through that. This is a QR code, so you can use your smartphone with the device. And there we have it. That's all we need to do for the setup. Now we can have a bit of a play with the onboard features. Let's have a quick look at some of the settings there. On the machine, you can add extra devices like a rotating chuck. One thing we need to do, and that is to tell the Pixie laser what type of laser head we have. We need to choose 10 watt, because that's the one that Aglo Laser sent me. And that is literally all the setup we need to do. Let's check out some of the onboard projects that they have in the machine. There are over 150 small examples that you can cut out instantly. I'm just sc scrolling through here to find something that's interesting and I've decided to go for that Alien 2 on the top right hand corner because I think that looks pretty funky. Now it's telling me I'm going to use 3mm plywood with 10 watts of power and it's going to take me about 5.5 minutes to uh, cut. But before we go any further, we need to adjust the height of that laser head uh, above our material. Algo Laser supplied this cute little hammer, which is actually a height gauge. It's just a matter of taking off the lid and there's a little knob on top of the laser and you can turn it left or right and that increases or lowers the height of that uh, module. The result I was trying to achieve was to get that little hammer to be able to slide to and fro with a minimal amount of resistance. Once we were happy with that, we hit next, then hit that center button, the home button, so the module moves to um, its original location. And the final step is to simply press start, and it will go through the project. And this is what we end up with. Three millimeter ply there, and it's such a cute little creaturey thingamajiggy. I think it's come up pretty well. The back does have a bit of residue on it, and that's because we're cutting on a flat surface, so you get that residue um, spill good start so far. Let's check out another feature that this unit has which is called the Algo Type. And using this double-ended stylus we can directly input some information into the screen. Now you click on the little icon then, you can then pick your size of the font and there are five different sizes. Once you select that you can then pick a type of uh, style that you want. You can either have handwriting or a print. I'm going to go with the handwriting and you can then directly type in the text that you wish to uh, engrave out straight into the screen there and of course I'm just going to type out scale model geek there 
And what I want to do is create a little business card. And for that, I'm going to use some coated metal business cards. And you do have a variety of different type of um, uh, materials that you can use. The coated metal then brings up all my pre-selected settings there. And it's just a matter of selecting what would look best on my particular card. I do a quick check of all the settings that I have there. Hit processing. Now I've already homed the head in there. And then I move our text right in the middle of the work area. I then hit the start icon. The unit then processes all the information and starts to engrave the little business card. This process took about or oh, just under five minutes. And there's our result. And you know what? I reckon it looks pretty good. I quite like that. Another feature that the Pixie has is what's called the Algo Sketch. And using the stylus, you can create your own little drawings. And the reality of this little section is the drawings have to be really simple, I think. I suck at sketching, so this is an area that really does not show my talent at all. I tried the most basic thing I could come up with, and that was, of course, Scale Model Geek. Once I was happy with my abstract work, I then hit forward. And this time around, I'm using some 3mm MDF there, some scrap I had laying around the studio. And of course, I need to tell Pixie what type of material I'm using. So we head into the material section and you can see a whole bunch of different types of materials there. I'm just going to click on the MDF. And you can see the background looks like MDF. So you select the icon that best suits the type of work finish that you're after. Hit start and then move the artwork into the middle of the screen. Again, hit start, and it goes through the process of calculations and sends it to the MDF. And this is what we end up with. Pretty basic, but it is effective. A great feature that this tiny little unit has is we can actually increase the height of the body to this unit. It's a matter of doing the four screws on the back, and I use the um, protective screen as a handle and just lifted it up and then once I got it to the height that I required, I then replaced those four screws back into the holes. Even after lifting up that body, the unit still felt very sturdy. As an experiment, I thought I'd use another piece of scrap material that I've got laying around. Seems like I've got a lot of scrap in my studio. But this time I've got some pine lumber there, or timber as we say in Australia. Of course, now that we've got a different size thickness in material, we need to readjust that laser module with the gauge hammer. Once I was happy with that adjustment, I needed to replace the protective cover over the laser head. Now this little small unit can only go in one way. On one side, there are uh, two slightly longer um, magnets and they go on the left hand side. The pixie will not work unless you've got that safety cover down. Now I head back into the algo type section and we go through the same process as we did earlier with the whole typing in of the text that we wish to engrave on that piece of lumber. We've changed the type of material we're using so we need to tell Pixie that we've changed it. We then scroll down, select pine board and you can see the background's changed to look like it's pine. Again you select the icon that best suits the finish work that you're after you hit start, it then heads over and calculates it all again, like I've said a number of times, and it starts engraving Scale Model Geek onto that pine. In this section, I did experiment with the two different types of font, and this is the print, and I kind of like it. It doesn't look too bad. On the Algo Laser website, they've got a section where you can select a whole bunch of different materials. They do everything from tumblers to plywood and also little cards and um, little coasters. There's a huge variety to choose from. This next section is what I'm most excited about with the Pixie. Connecting up a Type-C USB lead that you get with the Pixie then connecting up to a notebook or a PC, we can then control the Pixie through Lightburn. First thing we need to do is install the drivers. So once we've connected up, we just hit find a device. It then searches for those particular drivers. Once it found it, it brings it up. You then hit add device. The work area defaults to 100mm by 100mm, but for some reason I decided to uh, have a bit of experiment and type in a slightly large area. 
I then renamed the device to Pixie instead of that generic driver. Leave the laser origin at front left, then hit next, then click finish and we're done. Just confirm everything, hit OK. Move over to the right where it says device, change that over to Pixie and we're ready to go. The reason I'm so excited about this section of the Pixie is I get to create my own details. For my first test piece, I'm going to create this window frame. Now I'm using this stuff called boxboard, which is a really high density um, cardboard. It's available in 1, 1 1.4, 1.8 and 2.4 mil in thicknesses. In this particular case, I'm using the one millimeter board and my speed and output is 400 by 50. And that'll take about two minutes to cut out. With all my settings in Lightburn worked out, I then hit start and it sends it off to the laser to cut out my custom piece. Look at that. They came up so well on my first attempt. This window is only 40 millimeters in height. It's tiny, but the detail is absolutely fantastic. And I then did another cut at 35 mil. And yet you can still see all that detail there. Those small little stained glass sections were so fine, I can just poke them out with a hobby knife. And of course, I couldn't resist. I had to try it at a smaller scale. This time we're at 25 mil in height and yes, I've got to admit, it got very fragile. This time around, I went back to the original 40 mil in height and tried the thickest box board that I have, which is the 2.4 mil. Looks a bit thick, but it's still come up great. After those very successful tests, I got really cocky and decided to create some detail. Now, what I found online was a whole bunch of vector designs that I downloaded and using Lightburn, I then trace those images to create the files that I need to actually burn or um, engrave into the box board. I chose this particular image because it's got a lot of fine work in it and I thought it will make a great little detail to go on the side of some walls or in a control panel or something like that. So far with the quality of the results I'm getting, I really believe this is going to be a great addition to any workflow for those uh, scar modelers that scratch build. Look at that detail, it's really fine and you can just see those little vents there around the outer ring on the right hand side. There are so many applications that you can create with this little pixie. For instance in the military world where you're building buildings, you can do you know, arch windows, square windows, round windows, even the doors and door arches. Even using the engraved section, you can create cobblestones, little bases for figurines. And you can do that in like, you know, 6mm MDF. By the end of the day, my confidence was so high with this pixie that I started experimenting with little cogs. This can be used like a computer monitor. This is some side detail, some vehicle here. And these are the cogs that I cut out. These things are so tiny, yet it was able to cut out the little teeth around the edge of that cog. For me, this is one of the most exciting tools that have been sent to me probably in the last 18 months or so. This would make an addition to any workflow. Its size, its price point, its ease of use. There are just so many plus points. With a work area of 100 mil square, it's a great size to do details. If it came in 200 mil square work size, it would be a perfect machine. Anyways, if you like what you saw, go and check out some of my affiliate links in the description. In the meantime, go and check out also some of my other videos that I've created. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you next time.